I'm Jerry Peters. I've been in the art business for 40 years, I guess. Um, he wanted me to talk about O'Keefe, and along the way, about 1976, I had been buying uh, some O'Keefe's around the marketplace and was in the midst of buying one from Doris Bree when suddenly she couldn't make delivery, and that was obviously when her relationship with O'Keefe ruptured, and I wrote O'Keefe a letter and said, if this painting ever comes on the market, I was in the midst of buying it and would like to buy it. Um, they never offered me that painting, but before long, I was in communication, originally through Juan Hamilton. And for the last 10 years of her life, I became quietly her dealer. Um, we never sold a lot of pictures. You know, she was, you know, had a certain amount she wanted to sell each year just for cash flow and uh, was much more interested in the art than money. So we were usually three or four pictures a year mm -hmm. was all we would sell. And I was interested in buying pictures from her, so I never took a commission. I just accrued all that effort. And ultimately she called one day and asked me to come up for lunch. And, uh, typical lunch was watercress salad and a great French Chablis. And she would laid out five really great pictures and I got to choose. And ended up with the Black Cross. And she told me a wonderful story. This is a picture done in 1929. She had been uh, captured by Mabel to come to Taos and she, they had taken a walk and that afternoon and behind Mabel's house there's a Murata with an old Penitente cross and there was a great sunset. And this painting came out of that moment. So that's 1929 when O'Keefe had really just gotten to New Mexico. She and Becca James had left Lake George, I believe, and escaped Stieglitz's summer camp and wanted to uh, see the West. And uh, they enjoyed Taos, but ultimately she was attracted to Abiquiu, where there was much more private and it was a in, more interesting painting environment. Um, so she ended up there and spent summers and ultimately moved out full time. Looking back, it appears as though the Taos art colony created a little more substance. Um, it was a little deeper and richer. Um, the Taos artists settled in there. Uh, ultimately, they formed a society that was really a self-promotion vehicle, uh, traveling their pictures around the country. And ultimately, there were 12 members of that society, and it was quite successful. But Taos, as an artist community, attracted a lot of other artists who weren't part of that, but still quite successful and important, Fashion, Gaspard. And Mabel Dodge had quite an influence on bringing a lot of artists, um, some writers, certainly D.H. Lawrence, but she tried to attract and bring a lot of these people out. The Taos Art Colony was going without Mabel, but she certainly broadened it and uh, added diversity and that constant effort to create a salon and bring people to town. Uh, Taos was pretty isolated. It wasn't easy to get to. So Mabel had a strong influence on bringing those people to town, and some of them stuck.